What's up? Meditate here. And in this video, we're going to talk detailed about the vascular supply of the eyeball. And we'll start with the ophthalmic artery and then quickly run through the veins. So I want to start here because orientation is everything, really. If we look at the lateral view of the skull and remove the frontal and the zygomatic bone, we will be able to see the etmodal bone and the optic canal from which the ophthalmic artery comes from. Now, I want you to take a mental picture of this specific area because I've simplified it in order to map the artery easier. So the etmodal bone and the optic canal is here and for orientation's sake, the lacrimal gland is here on the upper lateral region of each orbit. Now, the ophthalmic artery goes through the optic canal and stays on the medial side of the eye. For the branches, I like to use Dr. McClessy as a mnemonic Arranging them like this, our first branch is the dorsal nasal. Now the dorsal nasal artery is more of a terminal branch of the ophthalmic artery. It goes out at the medial corner of each eye and then communicate with the angular artery, as you see here, which comes from the facial artery of the external carotid. So that is this one. Next is the R, R for central retinal artery. It pierces the eyeball together with the optic nerve and then branches off supplying the retina. So do you remember the layers of the eye? There's first the sclera, then there's the choroid, and then there's the retina. So as you see here, the artery branches out specifically to the retina. Next is the M, M for muscular branch, supplying the external muscles of the eye. And the external muscles of the eye are four rectus muscles, or straight muscles, and two oblique muscles one on the top and one on the bottom. This artery will supply all of them and then give off an important branch called the anterior ciliary artery, which forms a vascular zone under the conjunctiva of the eye. And it doesn't really do that alone. The posterior ciliary artery will pierce the eyeball from the posterior side and contribute to the vascular supply of the eyeball by forming vascular circles. And I want to spend a minute to tell you about these circles because it's really important that you get this principle. So again, here are the three layers of the eyeball. The sclera, the choroid, and the retina. Up here, you have the conjunctival membrane, which is a mucous membrane covering the sclera. And then there's the cornea, covering the anterior side of the eye, with the iris here and the lens. And of course, the ciliary body and the suspensory ligaments. So that is the general anatomy of the eye. But essentially, from the extraocular muscles, remember the anterior ciliary artery goes out to then supply the conjunctiva, contributing to the vascular zone of the conjunctiva. And you see this a lot. Those are the superficial vessels between the conjunctiva and the sclera you see grossly on the eye. But the anterior ciliary also has branches to the major arterial circle of the iris. And remember we mentioned the posterior ciliary arteries? Both the short and the long ciliary arteries lie in the choroid part of the eye. The long ones will help contribute to this circle, and the short ones will form a small arterial circle, called the intramuscular arterial circle. So, zooming in into this area, this is how it really looks like, supplying the structures of the eye, like the iris and the ciliary bodies and the choroid and so on. We'll get back to this again later in this video when we go through the veins, because there are going to be veins here as well. So that's these two. Next, L for lacrimal artery, supplying the lacrimal gland. It does have one important side branch called the lateral palpebral artery, supplying the lateral part of the eyelids. Next, E for etmodal arteries. There are the anterior and the posterior ones. They run through the etmodal foramen, as you see here. And then they both eventually end up in the nasal cavity. But the anterior etmodal will first run through the anterior cranial fossa to supply the anterior meninges. And then it will go down through the cribriform plate to meet up with the posterior etmodal, supplying the nasal cavity. And they contribute to form a plexus of arteries in the nasal septum called the Kisselbach's area or Little's area. This area can easily rupture and bleed, giving a nosebleed. It is formed by the greater palatin and the sphenopalatin of the maxillary artery, and the superior labial of the facial artery, and the etmodal arteries of the ophthalmic artery. So that is these. 
Next is the supraorbital artery, which goes upwards through the supraorbital fissure and supplies the skin and muscles of the forehead. And as it does that, it anastomoses with the frontal branch of the superficial temporal artery. Then we got one similar called the supratrochlear artery, which also passes upwards through the frontal foramen, which is a little medially to the supraorbital fissure. The supratrochlear artery will also supply the skin and muscles of the forehead. The last letter, I, stands for the internal or medial parpubular artery, which goes out on the medial side of the eye, forming a superior and the inferior palpable arch, together with the lateral palpable artery supplying the eyelids. So that is mainly the ophthalmic artery. Let's now quickly do the veins. The venous drainage happens with the help of the superior and the inferior ophthalmic vein draining into the cavernous sinus. From the superior ophthalmic vein comes the central retinal vein, going together with the central retinal artery to drain the retina from blood. Then there are the vorticose veins, two from the superior and two from the inferior side. Remember I showed you the scheme of the ciliary arteries making up the major and the minor arterial circle? The vorticose veins contribute to this, draining most structures of the eyeball. So these are very important. Now, essentially, both the superior and the inferior ophthalmic veins drain from the angular vein, which comes from the facial vein. The superior drains from it as a nasofrontal vein, and the inferior will divide into two branches. One branch will join with the pterygoid plexus through the inferior orbital fissure, while the other branch will connect with the superior ophthalmic vein. So that was a brief look at the vascular supply of the eyeball. If you found this video helpful, please put a like, share, comment, whatever you find convenient to you. See you next time.